What's up, YouTube? Georgia Silver Hunter back with a video that's a little bit different than what I post on my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about this 3D printer and what I've printed with it that I use for some of my coin roll hunts and maybe some things you can use to display some of your coin collection, as well as, you know, some ideas for those of you that do uh, a lot of melting of your silver and copper and uh, sand casting things. So, we're going to talk about some of the cool stuff that I have made, or at least what I think is cool, with this 3D printer. Um, so let's jump into it. So a little bit about this printer, if you're even remotely interested in it. Uh, this is a printer from Creality called the Ender 3. There's a couple of versions of it. This is the base model. We got it on sale and gave it to my kids for Christmas, and they've used it a little bit on and off. They've been having fun with it. I've probably had more fun with it, but uh, this was, I don't know, about $185, $195 uh, on Christmas on a little bit of a sale, and uh, it is a single color printer, so it, it only has one extruder. That's the thing that prints the plastic, and uh, so if you want to change colors mid-print, you do have to pause the print and change the color. I do have a couple of different colors worth of the plastic that it uses to make the prints called PLA. Um, I have white, red, and black, and you'll see some of the pieces that I've made today. So I'm by no means a 3D printing expert. I just think it's pretty fun, pretty neat, and I think, you know, it's some. I've made some cool stuff that you might be able to use in your, in your uh, coin collecting uh, adventure. So let's jump over and see the couple of things that I've made. There's lots more ideas out there, and I'd love to hear from you guys on things maybe you'd like to see printed or things that you might think would be interesting or helpful for your coin collecting. So we're going to start the stuff that I have made that I, I thought would be helpful in my, call it coin collecting and silver stacking journey and a couple of fun things. Uh, off here to the left, I've got four half dollar tubes. I've got a quarter tube here. In the back, I've got four coin counters and little devices that are supposed to help you wrap the coins easier. I'll show you a little demonstration of how it's intended to work. I have just found from experience it doesn't work that well, but I still thought it was a pretty cool thing that you could print. I have printed a couple of coin easels, uh, and I've got various different types of coins, and, and, and this is a little meteorite that's in a semi-PCGS like PCGS holder. It uh, works very well at holding those. And I printed a little simple uh, challenge coin holder, which we'll look at in a little more detail as well. And the last thing I printed was a coin trap with a dateless uh, walking, sorry, standing Liberty quarter in it. And we'll look at that in a little bit more detail here in a second. And then I'll close with just some of the stuff that I thought was a lot of fun to print that would be really cool if, uh, you know, somebody out there wanted to uh, melt some silver and sand cast some of these things. Um, I wish I had the equipment to do it, but I don't. Uh, and anyway, it's just some cool ideas and things you could be thinking about how you could use a 3D printer to maybe uh, come up with some new designs or things to do in your sand casting uh, adventure. So anyway, let's get over where I can put the camera up and get both my hands free, and we'll look at each of these things in a little bit more detail. So the first pieces we're going to talk about are these uh, half-dollar coin tubes and this quarter tube that I printed. Um, I did the math on this, and this cost me about 41 cents to make, uh, minus the cost of the printer, of course. But if you look at the, um, the, the cost of the material and how many of these I could print, uh, given the material that I bought, I, I didn't add up the number of these that I could make, but it works out to about 41 cents a print. I do have one that's got some 1987 uh, uh, NIFCs that I have found coin roll hunting. So there is some numismatic value to these, but very, very little. So uh, I'm okay keeping them in, in, in these uh, tubes that I made. And that leads me to what I wanted to share most is that because of the jagged edges that are created by the printouts on these things, like I wouldn't store really fine silver in these. I wouldn't store highly collectible coins in these. But the 40% silvers that you're going to find coin roll hunting and maybe even some of the 90% silvers you're going to find coin roll hunting, these tubes are going to be just fine. You know, I think if I had a bunch of BU stuff, I would spend the extra... 20 cents, you know, or 30 cents and buy these in bulk from a coin shop or on Amazon. But I am always running out of these. So I think it's pretty cool now that I can actually print new ones. And uh, if you're curious, these do take like about three hours. Maybe it was four hours to print. It takes a very long time, but it's the kind of thing that, you know, you kick off in the morning and come back at lunch and it's done. And then maybe kick off another one and after work it's done. And 
you know, you can print a couple of these a day. Um, not trying to say you want to start getting to ma getting into mass producing these, but uh, it's kind of a fun hobby, and I now have some relatively cheap extra storage. I picked a different design that I found on a website called Thingiverse, and I'll put links to anything that I talk about in this video uh, down below in the description. So if you're interested in purchasing PLA material or the 3D printer or, uh, you know, finding any of these designs, I'll, 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 I'll put links to those things down below. But this is a pretty simple quarter tube. Uh, I don't think I've filled it up yet, but it looks like it's about the right size to hold exactly $10 worth of coin. Uh, it does have a little indent here and a little hole in the bottom, so that's going to let air in. I don't know if in the long run if that's detrimental to silver. Right now I've just got some clad quarters in here just as a test. Um, but this is also pretty neat. And, uh, you know, if you just needed a spare one and coin shop was closed or whatever, Amazon's going to take a couple of days, I can just print one now. So now I want to talk about these. These were actually some of the first things that I printed. Um, as I said, they're intended for counting coins and to help you get them uh, in a way to stick a wrapper down in there to roll them. And I thought they were pretty cool designs. I obviously have taken a marker to make the numbers stand out. But in the design, there's little line markers so you know exactly how many dollars or cents you have in your tube. So here we've got a line for every dollar. And I can see right here, that I have exactly $5 worth because it's line number one, two, three, four, five. So this is exactly half a roll of quarters, which I think is a pretty cool thing. As much as I hunt coins, I'm actually really fast and really quick at just doing this by hand and stacking. But uh, if you're new or if you have kids, uh, you know, get, getting into the hobby, this is something kind of neat and kind of fun that I think they would enjoy. Um, I'm going to use the dime here to show you another neat aspect of these is on the bottom, it actually prints in. Hopefully you can see that the denomination and the size of the roll is actually uh, in the bottom of the coin, in the bottom of the, uh, the design. So this says 10 cents and $5. All the other ones say something similar. Like here it says uh, 50 cents and one penny. Um, this obviously says $2 and five cents. Uh, but I'll show you how it's intended to work, right? It's supposed to be you fill it up to the $10 mark Take your new handy dandy wrapper. I have found this doesn't work at all in a used wrapper. Uh, and I'm probably gonna struggle with this. I've had very limited success and that's kind of what I was mentioning earlier in the video. But uh, your, the, the intention is that you have an entire full roll and you should be able to just kind of fit this over your coin, just like that, turn it over. And when you pull it out, you've got an entire full roll of quarters. So that's how it's intended to be used. Like I said, if I were to try that 10 times in a row, I might get it to work seven times because uh, the, the paper ends up folding over or the coins end up not working right. And uh, I find it to be actually a bigger struggle than just hand stuffing the rolls, but it was a neat idea. So I did these in pennies, nickels, obviously dimes and quarters. And uh, I just thought it was kind of something fun and neat that I would share with you guys. Maybe you have these that you bought at the store or got from a bank or something like that, but I thought it was pretty neat that they were printable. So to quickly move on, I have printed three of the exact same coin easel. I don't think there's much to say about these. Um, I know a lot of you out there that do coin auctions. You've constantly got something that you're standing your coins up on, and that just fell over. That's okay, though. Um, but this is pretty neat because if you wanted to do it in a certain color, there's lots of different designs out there for coin easels. So this is just one I printed three times in three different colors. Uh, but it's very versatile. And, uh, you know, if you had the 3D printer, you could buy, you know, whatever color PLA you wanted. Uh, or you could do it in white and then just take a marker to it and color it however you like. Or just pick an entirely different design. But I thought it was a, a pretty neat idea. Uh, another thing I tried is I, it'll actually hold my phone up in landscape. Uh, but you have to have it just perfect on there, otherwise the phone falls over. And I know it's an overhead camera, but that's that's what it looks like head on. It works very, very well. The other easel I wanted to show you, and this one is probably the fastest thing I've printed. It prints in two pieces. This thing prints in like six or seven minutes, maybe eight minutes. And it's got a little tab that allows you to connect the two things. The issue I have with it is that the slots that are built into it are just big enough for a challenge coin. So, uh, or maybe, maybe um, you know, a coin and a flip. Actually, a coin and a flip will work as well. 
Uh, as I said, this is from Georgia Scratcher, who is another YouTuber I've run into in the past. And uh, feel free to check his content out if you like. I, I know he's taking a little bit of a break, but he's got a lot of old content out there. Uh, this is what it looks like with a, you know, with a coin flip, and it can look just as nice. And last but not least is that coin trap that I told you about. And as I said, I know I've seen uh, Silver Seeker. He, you know, he sells these. I know these are part of giveaways that he does all the time. And I just had to print one. I actually printed two. I had one with a half dollar in it, but I ended up breaking that open and taking the half dollar back out of it. So I can't show you the half dollar one today. But what's really neat is, you know, if you were to give this as a gift to someone, you can obviously see that the coin inside is too big. Uh, and it won't come out, so people are going to wonder how you got it in there. And the reality is, you actually print the trap around the coin. So when you start printing it, it goes like this, and as the thing builds up from the bottom, when it gets about halfway there, you just dump the coin in, and then it finishes printing around the coin. And you are left with a neat little coin trap. Okay, so that's it for the coin-related things that I have made so far. I'm constantly looking for new ideas on Thingiverse and just on the internet because I'm just really enjoying being able to print some of these things, uh, even though a lot of it is a waste. And what I'm about to show you, some of the other things I've made, my daughter loves to uh, let me know that they are also wasteful, but I'm a big kind of superhero fan, so being able to print this stuff makes me happy. And uh, I'm going to show you a handful of these things. And as I said earlier, if you're somebody who melts silver and, and you know, you sand cast things, some of these would be pretty neat to see done in silver or copper. Uh, the first thing is these Batarangs. These are from Batman v Superman. I've actually got two of them. I think they look really, really nice. They actually have, it's hard to see all in the white, but it actually has the detail from the movie design in them. Um, but I made two of these. They printed really fast. They don't throw very well because they're very light, but I bet if they were made in copper, they'd throw really, really well. And they're actually still, even though made of plastic, really sharp on the edges. So this would make one heck of a throwing star, quite frankly. But I made two of those. Carrying on with the Batman theme, I have printed a black Batman bust. I don't know how well that's going to show up against the black background, but uh, I think this is a really neat design. Uh, it's kind of very old school. It's pretty big. I think if you did this in silver, this would end up weighing probably way too much. You're probably looking at eight or nine ounces of silver uh, if you were to make something this big, but it could always be scaled down and made smaller. And I'll show you what a smaller, uh, similar bust looks like. Because I've done one in white, and this is based on the Batman Begins design. I think it looks really, really nice, the level of detail on it. But it's based on the Christian Bale Batman from the latest, well, I won't say the latest Batman movies, I guess the Ben Affleck movies were the latest ones. But uh, really, really nice. I think still something like this would probably come in at, you know, a couple, two, three, four ounces. This would be pretty heavy if done in silver and pretty pricey but would look really, really nice. Um, I have done The Incredible Hulk, a little figurine. Uh, again, really good detail in the pants. You can see veins, you can see muscles. Uh, I know it's in white, so it's tough to see some of that detail maybe in the camera. But again, this printed completely supportless. You know, he prints like this from the feet up. Uh, and it looked really, really nice. And for fun, I made one... <laughs> really, really small, and took my daughter's markers and colored it. So this is the exact same thing, just scaled down. The original one of these uh, is much, much bigger. This is scaled down to, I think, 40% full size, and this is at 25% full size. So you can get an idea of how big it's intended to be. But this is just to show you that you can actually paint or, or marker that uh, material, and it actually comes out looking okay. But I thought that was pretty neat. And the last thing I'll show you is the biggest thing I've printed, and that is, and I'm going to have to back out, a really, really big bust of Superman. So this is a really detailed uh, Superman. He's got a cape. It is. It does have a little platform that he sits on, but it does have the full cape. There is actually air behind the body. Um, and you get the full chest, the full emblem, big curl in the hair. This has a lot of detail in it. And uh, this took like a day to print. This took a very, very long time to print. 
But uh, these are all things that I keep on my desk typically at work or uh, now that we're all working from home, it's really on my desk at home. But uh, these are the kind of things that I would I would keep there on a, on a work desk just as a little figurine talking piece. Something to keep me company during the day as well as something like coins on easels. But uh, And one last piece that I uh, almost forgot about. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite little 3D printed pieces of late, and that is this Baby Yoda, or uh, if you watch The Mandalorian, his name is Grogu. Uh, but I 3D printed this the other day as well, and it came out pretty fantastic. I did break his fingers off, unfortunately getting some of the support materials out of there. Uh, the base says, uh, what you seek is seeking you. So it actually, it's uh, kind of embossed here on the base, but a lot of little detail on this guy. Um, for a size comparison, we'll put him next to Superman because that was definitely the biggest piece we have. And you can see the uh, Grogu is a bit smaller. Um, I did not scale him up or down. This was how big he was on Thingiverse. But you could, of course, make him bigger or smaller. But uh, if you're a Star Wars fan out there, this thing is actually pretty darn cool. And uh, he'll be something that if I ever do go back to an office one day, he'll be sitting on my desk as a conversation piece. Anyway, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, I was excited about the 3D printer. I know this isn't the kind of video I normally do. So if you're new to the channel, understand normally this is about coin roll hunts or coin collections that I've purchased or stacking silver, or what silver you should buy. So that's my typical content. But I just, I've found so much enjoyment in this 3D printer. I thought I would share it. Uh, I am using it for some of my coin needs, and I thought it would be interesting to show you guys. I am happy to answer any questions that you have. So leave me questions in the comments down below if this is interesting for you, or if maybe you have a 3D printer and you're struggling with it. I'm not an expert, but I feel like I've done a pretty good job with the little bit of time we've had it. Um, and I really like the, the printer that I have. So if you're in the market for one, I'll leave a link in the description down below, an Amazon affiliate link. Um, what else can I say? If you like the video, let me know that in the comments below as well, because I, you know, I am going to you know, continue to focus on coins. But every now and then I'm going to throw in something coin adjacent, um, just because it's fun for me. And I hope somebody out there finds it fun and interesting as well. And honestly, if you've got little ones uh, who are getting into, the, into coin collecting, being able to do stuff like this, may actually spark some interest as well because they're getting to make the things that are holding the coins that they're finding. So uh, with that said, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you're new here and you aren't subscribed and this video is interesting, or even if it's not, check out some of my older content. And if you wouldn't mind, drop down below and click on that subscribe button. Uh, if you like uh, to see more of my videos, click on the little bell and select all so you get notified when I release new videos. And uh, leave a like and or a comment. Uh, I've got some more half dollar videos in the, in the queue. I've actually already filmed a couple of boxes. I just didn't have enough finds, uh, so far to put a whole video together. So I do have some more coin roll hunts coming. Uh, so for those of you that like those videos more than something like this, just hold on. It's on its way. Uh, you guys take care, uh, have fun, and, uh, I will see you in the next one.